Hello everyone, this is Mukundan Raghavan and today we are going to discuss on page objects chaining. Obviously, we are going to use the page object model, but let's understand more how to create the page objects with standards and good practices. Let's jump into the video and before going to the video, we will try to understand the manual scenario. Here you are in the login.salesforce.com where you will be using your own credentials that you created in the previous video. Now we are in the home page or maybe in the login page to be precise. In the login page, you will be having the username, password and login button. These are the three elements you are going to work. Whereas there will be three actions, entering the username, entering the password and clicking on the login button. This clicking on the login button will help us to navigate to the home page. In the home page, in coming videos, we will be doing the different business flows. However, before proceeding anything on the home page, we need to confirm that we landed into the home page. Unlike normal manual testing, we will not be knowing until unless we make the assets. For example, your home page might be different, but however, it will have some static element which confirms that you landed into the home page. In my instance, I'm going to check whether the service is visible or not. As soon as I confirm the service is visible, I am good to go for the next subsequent steps. So these are the two things we are going to do in this video. We have two pages. One is login page. Second one will be the home page. Let's go to the VS code and try to understand this. And here you can see we have the project structure where we will be having the pages folder under which we will create the two pages, login page and home page and under the test under which we will create the login test. Let's go to the login page first. If we go to the login page, obviously we are going to use the type of page. We will import that page type from the play rate test. And the home page, as of now, you don't need to consider. I will come back to this in later point. And next to that, we will be creating the class and the class name. Class name should follow the standard class name followed by the page as the suffix. Export default will make sure we can share our code to the next classes or other classes to other tests as well. Then we will be writing all our locators or the selectors. Here you can see the selectors will have the suffix selector in each and every field. For example, username input selector, password input selector, login button selector. If it is the input, input, if it is a button, if it is a button, we will mention button. If it is the checkbox, we will mention checkbox or radio button or drop down followed by the selector and your selector might be different based on your interest based on your practice now coming to the constructor constructor will have the private page which is type of page this is the concise code which will make sure we are passing page object to this constructor and it will have its own local page what i mean here is like even you can create here private and then my page which is type of page again and you can mention this dot my page and the page which is coming through the constructor but we don't need to mention that if you mention the private page or public page it automatically senses you have the local page and you are having the input incoming page which will be mapped to each other and as we discussed we will be having the different methods here username, password, click login button and navigate to the login page in case you are not navigating to the URL. And here I did not mention anything on the base URL because in config.ts you will be having the base URL at the top. Here you can see under the use you will be having the base URL so that you can use directly just mentioning the hash. Okay, coming back to the login page. So here you are using the fill username and the username will be coming through the parameter. And you will be using the same class username input selector to fill the username. Same goes to the password. Now coming to the login button. When you click on the login button, obviously we will be navigating to the home page. But in case if you have any issues like your username or password expired or admin has blocked you for any reason or it is some other issue. So it's not about we will be always logging into the application successfully. There might be the issues. We need to catch that by using the catch block. And after catching that, I will be just mentioning inside the console. If required, I will throw it again. However, you will have the clear message why you were not able to log in so that you can fix the issue faster. 
Then obviously, once you click on the login button, it goes to the home page. In basic base, we will create two instances in our test to have home page, login page, both. But it's not required. Maximum times, we can link the objects from the class itself. What I mean here is like, I know that sure, when I click on the login button, it will go to the home page from where I will be starting my next testing. So rather than giving the task to the tester or in the test class or in the test to write the another instance, I am creating here itself. Here you can create home page and I am passing the existing whatever we used to so far the same page I am using and just creating the home page object and I am returning that. So this is simple as it is and this is called page object chaining. Now coming to the test case, it's very simple straightforward. I will be using the test and I will be using the login page object. So for that reason, I will be importing the login page class from the pages login page as per our framework. Now, if I go to the test, test and then I will be having the async function. I will be using the existing fixture from the play rate called page. By using the page, you can navigate, you can use the different browser actions. Obviously, we have the browser context and page, but directly we can jump into the page. Now, by using the same page, which is coming from the predefined playwright fixture, I'm creating the login page. Then I'm calling the navigate to the login page. Obviously, it will go to the base URL. Then I'm using the username and password to fill it. Here the catch is we are not supposed to hard code any value into the test case, especially the user credentials. Just to start up with this one, I am hard coding, but in coming videos, we can refactor and we will not use any hard coded or user credential inside directly on the test case. After completing this, I will be clicking on the login button by using the same login page. As we discussed, login page will have the method to click on the login button. Obviously, it returns the home page object. So that's the reason if you go to the login test. As soon as I click on the login button, unlike the previous steps, I'm capturing the output because it is returning the home object. So I'm capturing with the same home page. Now by using the home page, I can just call the another method. Now you might have a question, what is home page? Let's go to the home page. Home page follows the same structure as login page. It will be having the required import statement and export default, the class name, which has a suffix page. And everything will be the locator, which are again private and read only. Following the same, it is a title and it will have the suffix locator. Constructor follows the same structure. And here we have only one action, expect service title to be visible. And again, we use the expect here and we will be getting the title by using the same maybe element name and to be visible. Even I can give the element name and I can give that timeout also here. It is some of the functionalities under the to be visible method. Okay, let's have the method here and you can see this is from the home page. However, I am creating the home page from the login page itself by using the chaining. By using the same home page instance, I am calling that method. Simple as it is. Now we are going to execute. In play rate, you have a lot of ways to execute. You can directly click on this in the VS code or you can go to the plugins and you can just see here, you can execute from here as well. But this time I would prefer to use the terminal because terminal commands will be helpful for you in case if you are connecting with CI CD or any kind of remote, let's say execution part. So for that reason, the simple command would be, or I can use the existing ones. So let me go to the NPX. NPX playwright test. When you mention NPX playwright test, it will execute all the tests under the test folder, but I want to execute only the login test. At this point of time, it does not matter, but however, better to use if you want to execute only one test and the test case name. And your test case name obviously should have the dot spec dot TS. Otherwise it is not considering as the test. So after having the naming, after having the test class or test name, we will be having hyphen hyphen headed. By default, playwright executes all your tests inside the headless mode, which means that you will not open the browser. So that's the reason just to see the output for this demo, I will be mentioning hyphen hyphen headed. Click enter. Execution is completed. Let's go to the terminal again. Again, one more command. 
npx play rate show report even it is suggesting already there at the top you can just enter here and here you can see the output click on that and here you can see the entire steps one by one and the screenshots in case if you are not able to see the screenshots go to your playwright config.ts again and under the use so there will be option screenshot on if you don't find it just add screenshot colon and on you will be having the screenshot in your report so basically what we have covered here is like we have seen the manual flow we are going to the login page entering the username and password and we have we have just navigated to the home page and we have confirmed we navigated to the home page by using the assets for the same we created the two classes page objects we followed some standards such as the class name should have the suffix page and the locators or let's say the selector should have the selector as a suffix and before to that it will be having the type of that for example input or button or checkbox or radio button and we have discussed how we can create the object of another class inside the same login button. This is called the chaining. Then when coming to the test case, we have created the object only for the login page and we have used the other functionalities like a username and password filling. Then when we click on the login button, we know that it is returning the home page object and we capture that and by using the home object, sorry, home page object, we have used another method expert service title to be visible and we checked it. And we executed all the test cases using the terminal commands npx playwright test and the test case name followed by the iPhone iPhone headed. Headed will make sure that it opens in the real browser rather than using the headless mode. Then we use the npx playwright show report to show the report inside the browser. Uh, just we have seen here. So this is the same. And in case if you are not able to see the screenshot, we have discussed how to update this going to the playwright config ts and under the use there will be a screenshot on. So these are the things we have covered in this video. Basically, this will be the same structure in coming videos. Whenever we go for the long business flows, we will be creating the page object. We will be creating the test cases. So this is all about this video and always be a rainbow in other scroll.